Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis, the channel where we look at complex organic chemistry and explain how it works. This week, we will be completing the synthesis of batrytotoxin A. Last week, we looked at the first half of the Lewis synthesis of batrytotoxin A. This started with the hadrosh parish ketone and built up the core of the polycyclic structure to produce the diacetal which is shown here. This acetal was the first product of a multi-step sequence which proceeded with an ozonolysis reaction. In this reaction, the molecule is reacted with ozone gas and a 3 plus 2 cycloaddition occurs, forming a malozonide which then undergoes a cycloreversion to form an aldehyde and a carbonyl O oxide. This reacts with the methanol which was used as a solvent, which ultimately forms a methoxy hydroperoxy acetal. This is shown here as a single step for the sake of brevity, but likely forms in a stepwise manner. The authors managed to isolate this unusual intermediate and confirmed its structure using X-ray crystallography. When performing this sequence on the large scale, the authors carried out these steps in one pot, with the protection of the diol, the ozonolysis, and the reduction of the hydroperoxy acetal using sodium borohydride, all occurring in one pot, which produced the target compound in a 73% yield. As the next proposed step of the reaction sequence involved the selective reaction of one of the primary hydroxyl groups, the researchers first performed a transketalization. This involved the hydrolysis of the strained six-membered acetal and the formation of a less strained five-membered acetal, which is formed by the attack of the primary hydroxyl group and the oxocarbenium produced by the acid hydrolysis. This compound was not isolated and was taken forward to the Grayeco elimination. This reaction uses nitrophenyl selenyl cyanate, which is reacted with tributyl phosphine which acts as a nucleophile and forms a selenide. The more nucleophilic primary hydroxyl group attacks this phosphorus species, eliminating the selenide, which then adds to the carbon bonded to the oxygen, which is eliminated to form a phosphine together with the organoselenide. This is reacted with hydrogen peroxide to form a selene oxide, which can then undergo an intramolecular elimination to abstract a proton and form the exoalkene. Progressing forward, the acetal was then deprotected using CSA to reveal the 1,2 diol. This underwent cleavage with sodium periodate, where the iodine species sequentially bind to the two hydroxyl groups. This periodate species cleaves the diol carbon carbon bond to produce a dialdehyde, one remaining on the substrate and the other being eliminated as formaldehyde. This reaction produced the target in an 83% yield. This aldehyde was then reacted in a reductive amination. Reaction with methylamine forms an imine, which is reduced with sodium trifluoroacetate borohydride to produce the secondary amine, which wasn't isolated, but was instead reacted with chloroacetyl chloride, together with lutidine as a base. The amine first adds to the acid chloride, and then the tertiary alcohol which is on the same face of the molecule, is deprotonated by sodium ethoxide, which reacts with the alkyl chloride to complete the lactam ring in a 61% yield. With this ring installed, the researchers moved into the final stages of the synthesis. The next reaction was an oxidation using singlet oxygen. This singlet oxygen was generated by oxygen gas reacted under irradiation from a fluorescent light bulb and a triphenyl porphyrin photosensitizer. Due to the electron configuration adopted by this singlet spin state, it can undergo reactions that triplet paramagnetic oxygen cannot. In this case, the oxygen adds to the alkene to form a cyclic per peroxide. This reacts in a manner analogous to the ene reaction, where it abstracts a hydrogen atom, forming a double bond and opening up the three-membered ring to form a hydroperoxide. This hydroperoxide was then oxidized using DMAP 
and acetic anhydride. DMAP acts as a nucleophilic catalyst and adds to the acetic anhydride to produce an active acetylating species together with the acetate byproduct. The hydroperoxide is acetylated by this species, which activates it due to its electron withdrawing nature, and the acetate acts as a base to abstract a proton with a mechanism that is somewhat similar to the more common Hock cleavage or the Kornblum Delamere rearrangement, which are commonly seen for organic peroxides. This forms the target aldehyde in a 60% yield, together with the elimination of acetate. This reaction was quite slow, and the Ene reaction was carried out over four days, while the acetylation oxidation sequence took only two hours. In addition to this oxidation, the tertiary hydroxyl group on the molecule was also acetylated by these reaction conditions. The authors found that even after four days, they still recovered acetylated but unoxidized byproducts. This byproduct was subjected again to the ene reaction and oxidation conditions to convert it to the target compound. With the aldehyde now installed, the next step was a Grignard reaction with methyl magnesium bromide, which produced the target secondary alcohol in a 68% yield in a 6 to 1 DR. To complete the synthesis, the authors then carried out the final reduction and deep protections. Lithium aluminium hydride reduced both the acetate and the amide, and the acetal was converted to the hemiacetal using hydrochloric acid. This produced the target compound in an 89% yield. Overall, the authors produced 10 milligrams of this target compound. This was not due to low yielding reactions, but instead due to the extreme toxicity of the aminated compounds, which forced the researchers to carry out these reactions on a very small scale to minimize any safety risks. This highly toxic and challenging compound was produced in just 16 steps, many of which were carried out sequentially in one pot, making this a very efficient and effective synthesis. Highlights of this synthesis include the photoredox coupling and the creative use of the singlet oxygen ene reaction. This strategy will allow for the larger scale synthesis of battery show toxins, which are commonly used to study the biology of sodium gated ion channels and is a useful building block as it can easily be converted to batrachotoxin or other members of this family through simple chemical modifications. That's everything for this week's simplifying synthesis. If you enjoy these videos, please like and subscribe. And if you have anything you'd like to see, let me know in the comments down below. Next week, we'll look at some pharmacology and see how CBD inspired molecules can be fine tuned to be positive or negative allosteric modulators of the CB2 receptor.